An Unseen Historian by Molly Ahern There is a top hat in the drawing room. It covers a perfect circle on the table beneath it. If the hat were to be lifted, the circle would be the only place in the room without a decade's worth of dust coating its surface. I say this, but do suppose that, for the hat to be lifted, someone, perhaps something, would have to enter the room and disturb the dust on its path to reach the hat in the first place. It has been a long time since anything entered the drawing room. It has been even longer since a person did. I suppose something happened. I hope it was a localized event, that living things were driven from some small area around the house, or perhaps only the house itself. I hope that when the hat is eventually lifted, it is removed gracefully, leaving the perfect circle preserved. I hope I will be here to see that circle on the still polished table in all its glory, bright, clean, outshining everything in sight. I have learned in my time, in the world and then this house, that humans run easily, that sometimes they will leave a place and never return. It does not take much to scare a human away, but the same cannot be said for other animals. When the family left, I assumed they had gone on holiday to see a family or some place far away, so beautiful that I couldn't even imagine it. When the servants stopped tending to the house and left, I assumed they had followed the family and that the house was being shut down temporarily or moved out of entirely. When no one came back and no new faces came exploring, I knew that the humans had abandoned this place that it had become a place that would be avoided until the fears of it was lost to time and generations. When the birds stopped knocking at the windows, I knew that it was much worse than human eccentricity. I'm glad this house is so large. It would be quite boring to be confined in a cottage for all eternity, no matter how quaint or charming or how pleasant the scent of hanging herbs. I know boredom well. Ever since life left the house, I have been bored. I told you earlier that I have been alone here for a decade. I feel obligated to mention that I am not confident in my assumption of how much time has passed. I don't notice the seasons anymore. It may have only been a year or two, or it may have been fifty. I could have counted the days to keep track, as I did at first. But once I stopped seeing mice and cockroaches and the spider web stopped growing, I knew that I would be counting for a very long time. So I stopped. Despite its state of not quite disrepair, this place is still beautiful. A beauty draped in dust remains a beauty. I think the absence of living things is what has kept this house in a livable condition, was that a concern. There are no dead things waiting to be swept away by a maid that will never return. The droppings and spider webs that once existed have mostly disintegrated, and even the dust is not thicker than it would be had the servants not shut up well when they left. I expect they believe, then, that they may return. Only a handful of attic rooms are plagued with mold, the ones that have cracks in the ceiling that were low in the list of repairs to be done before the exodus. And I would swear it grows more slowly than before, fighting for its right to remain. I did not see anything die when it happened. Everything left. I don't know if they died once they exited the building, but I can tell you that I don't see anything out the windows. There are no piles of dead birds, nor are there live ones. I think there must be some insect life, as many plants in the garden have survived, and many weeds thrive right up to the windows. I cannot explain how this is possible, but it is one of the things that gives me hope that whatever happened simply scared things away, that they were filled with dread when remaining in this building and left as a result of pure instinct. I wish I could leave this place and find the truth, but I also know that I may be disappointed. I may find a pile of rodent bones when I venture to the edge of the long, seedy grass and larger remains further out. I do not hope for these things, but I have had a long time to think about what might be out there and what could have happened. Not all my theories about what awaits beyond my line of sight are so macabre, but I push the others down so as not to get excited at the prospect of people returning one day, and being disappointed when I cannot ignore how unlikely that is.
I try to forget that I ever had company in this shell of a place. I cannot. Every room, every chair, every view when I look out from one of the many windows reminds me of something. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's a memory. Sometimes the wispy echoes of a feeling that I know I will never feel again. I always end up back in the drawing room. I always end up staring at that hat. Sometimes I talk to myself. I pretend there are people here still. That they're in other rooms, or out in the garden, or taking children for a walk. I live in a fantasy world where I don't have to think about how no one will ever come back because, in that world, they're still here. Sometimes they're even sitting opposite me, listening to my ramblings. I can do this in the drawing room more than any other in this fast place, because it was always changing. The room itself holds many memories, but the layout, the view of the weeds, the hat, they are empty for me. They have existed almost exclusively in the after, which, somewhat paradoxically, means I can ignore that things have changed. I can ignore the fact that I will likely never lay eyes on that perfect shining circle.